Hey, this is Aaron from Night Combat Solutions. Today I'm going to talk about handheld thermal monoculars. Uh, aside from the goggles or say a PVS-14 that I wear on my helmet, uh, a handheld thermal is one of the items that I find the most useful when I'm actually out in the field. Uh, night vision alone is great, uh, but you just lack the detection capability that you get with a thermal. Uh, and I, I prefer a handheld thermal more so than I do a weapons mounted thermal of sorts because it gives me the ability to stop uh, and scan every field or wood line uh, or any terrain feature that I want with thermal without actually pointing a weapon so I can detect uh, animals or whatever I'm looking for uh, without actually having to wave that weapon around uh, and without knowing what's there and previously you know in the in the years past before thermal was uh, at the point that it's at now Thermal was mainly just, just a detection tool. You might see a hot spot over here in this wood line, but you couldn't actually identify it or even recognize it, uh, even at fairly short ranges. Um, as thermals advance, the prices have also come down. And two, two of the thermals that have just really stood out to me uh, over the last couple years are the Pulsar HD38S and the Pulsar HD19A. Uh, you're looking at under $2,000 for the 19A and well under $4,000 for the 38S. Uh, if you look at them, they're similar uh, in construction, but drastically different when it comes to the actual image quality. Um, but to give you kind of a point of reference, uh, we took out the HD 19A, which like I said is under $2,000, and put it next to the FLIR PS32, which is closer to $3,000, uh, put it next to the EOTech X320, which retails at about $3,500, uh, and then even put it up against uh, an L3 MTM, which ranges from about $9,000 to $12,000 on the commercial market. The HD19A not only kept up with each one, but it absolutely smoked the little FLIR PS32, which is $1,000 more. It crushed uh, the X320, which is $1,500 more, uh, and it actually looked slightly better than the MTM, which just kind of blows my mind because the MTM is the, the handheld thermal that I've judged all other thermal monoculars against. Uh, some of the features, though, are you've got a fiber-reinforced polymer body, so it's pretty strong. I've never managed to break uh, any of the Pulsar thermals, and in fact, it's, I carry every brand of night vision and thermal, uh, and it's the only brand that I've never had a unit go back to the factory for any reason. Uh, that said, the HD19, uh, the 19 comes from its 19 millimeter lens, which gives you a unity magnification, uh, a true 1x magnification. Uh, I prefer it for around where I live in the Ozarks, where even though our farm has over a thousand acres, the largest field is only 330 yards across. It's mostly wooded, so that field of view, uh, the added field of view of 1x over a system that actually has more magnification is actually more beneficial to me personally when I'm hunting at home. Um, the controls are laid out as good as you could possibly lay out controls on a thermal device. It's much like a military setup uh, where you have simple buttons and dials. There's not a complex menu. Uh, it's designed to be used, not to sit there and play with features all night. Uh, you've got a dial up here on the front. Uh, that allows you to control your brightness or you can push it down and turn it and control uh, your contrast. And there's quite a wide range of adjustment there. If you were to just hold that button down for three seconds, the menu would pop up and that would allow you to scroll through a simple menu if you chose to and access some features that aren't uh, ac accessible just by pressing a button. On top, you've got uh, a button. Your first button allows you to press it and release and you'll double your magnification and then go to 4x and so on. If you were to hold down that button, it'll toggle between white hot and black hot. Uh, you've got a calibration button and you've got your power button. Now, one of my a couple of my favorite features are that it uses AA batteries. Uh, I get about five and a half hours out of a set of AA lithium batteries. Uh, it's got a video out port so that you can actually record video with it uh, and use it for an AAR just to, to post up your hunting videos, whatever the case may be. It's got a very nifty little lens cap uh, that you can't lose because it's built in and it functions much like a camera lens cap would. Uh, the core is a 3, uh, 384 by 288 
uh, microblometer, which is slightly different than what you're used to. You know, usually you'll see a 320 core or 336 core or 640 core. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly how they achieve it, but if you were to put this in my hands in the dark after having looked through every thermal device out there, if I didn't know better, I would look through this and tell you that it had a 640 core uh, when in fact it doesn't. Uh, the image quality is just absolutely outstanding for the price. You simply can't beat it. Uh, in fact, you can spend twice as much money on another product and still not come close to the image quality of this device. Uh, the 38S is slightly different now it's got a 38 millimeter lens so you end up having some magnification with that uh, which reduces your field of view but say when I hunt Texas or some other areas that have more open terrain um, I like that magnification it allows me to not only detect something at distance but uh, actually identify it as well and so it oftentimes eliminates even the need to go to a weapon scope or a clip-on to identify uh, an object that I've detected in the thermal uh, You'll notice that the S uh, designator stands for, it's got a OLED screen rather than the LCD screen of the A models. Uh, and what that does basically is it gives you a little bit more clarity uh, and a little bit more crisp image that gives you a little bit more detail over an LCD screen, but it also adds about $800 to the price given the same, all the other features were the same. Uh, this one, like I said earlier, is under $4,000. You're actually right around $3,700. Uh, its image quality is second to none as far as uh, when you start to compare it to other, other makes and models. You know, you can take a, a Fleer LS64 and this unit, you know, for far less money will absolutely crush it in the image quality department. Uh, even the, the 640 uh, EOTech doesn't come close to producing an image uh, like the HD38S does. Uh, and one, one of the big uh, improvements on these versus, say, the FLIR or the EOTEX, uh, one of my gripes on those units have always been that the display is tiny. It looks like a thumbnail size display, which even if the core is great, the lens is great, if your display is that small, it makes it really hard to actually identify objects. Uh, with the bigger display, uh, it's more like looking through an actual weapon site where you have a nice large display. If I scan a field, uh, I can nine times out of ten identify everything in that field using just the thermal without the need to go to a magnified night vision system to make that identification. Uh, now it's always good to have night vision to identify uh, and not only that so that you can see beyond your target and make sure that you have a backstop, you're shooting in a safe direction and there's nothing else back there. But these will do what other units previously couldn't do, and that's identify animals at farther distances. Uh, so, for example, the sub $2,000 uh, 19A, we took that in, out into one of our fields. Uh, it's about 300 yards, and there was a group of deer out there, and you could easily identify that they were deer beyond a shadow of a doubt. In fact, you could tell that some were bucks and some were does. Uh, with the FLIR PS32, that costs quite a bit more you could just tell that they were blobs. You couldn't even tell that they were deer, uh, let alone what sex they were. So getting into that, there's another pretty cool feature in the S models. So the 19S and the 38S have a form of stadiometric rangefinder. So what that means, uh, stadiometric rangefinders, you'll usually work by bracketing a target uh, of a known height. So if you had a deer out there, you would put one bracket on the bottom, one on the top, put in your input as to what the height of that target is and you would get your feedback telling you the distance. Pulsar's come up with a pretty pretty nice way of actually simplifying that process. Um, they have icons built in so if you were to range a deer you would select a deer icon and you would scale that deer until it matched up to the size of the deer that you're looking at and it would actually give you the range. Same with a hog, and then there's a rabbit icon, which I've found works with other small animals, such as armadillos and possums and skunks that we're overloaded with. Um, I was a little bit skeptical of that at first, so we took it out, took a laser range finder paired with a PVS-14, and we actually tested it against both deer, hogs, and then some small animals, and we were never more than 20 yards off out to 400 yards, which is pretty impressive. I would generally, if I had to guess, I would have estimated that you'd have about a 50 yard uh, variation there, but it's actually quite precise. So 
the way I use a thermal, uh, I've always got either a monocular on, goggles on. Uh, the size and weight actually have a lot to do with how well I like that and how often I'm going to use that. Being that these are fiber reinforced polymer, um, they're actually quite light. They're the same weight or a little bit lighter as pretty much any other thermal in that class, uh, given that the lens size and the are, is similar to the uh, lens size of the Pulsar. Uh, size wise, you can tell that, yeah, they're a little bit bigger than a PVS 14. Uh, not a whole lot in length. They're about an inch and a half longer than a PVS-14, about an inch and a half wider. So it's not something that you can just slip in your front pocket, uh, but really the only thermal you can do that with is like a, a Skeeter, which is insanely expensive and restricted, or the Armasite Q14. But for wearing it on a lanyard uh, or even mounting, it's a perfect size, perfect weight. And so far I have yet to find a single complaint about any of the Pulsar line of monoculars. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. And if you'd like to see a video on anything else in particular, please just send us an email, let, it, let us know what it is, and uh, we'll see if we can't make a video about whatever night vision or thermal devices or accessories you may have in mind. Thanks.